Hello and welcome back to the Off Grid Garage here. <laughs> it's the same day for me, a different video for you. We have just mounted our inverter here inside the cabinet, inside the electrical enclosure. And I have also prepared the clamped plate here with all our incoming for all our incoming cables here. We've got the 240 volt output. We've got the positive coming in here, the negative coming in here, and they're going straight away to the terminals. And we've got one more for all our grounding and earthing here for the door, the enclosure, the um, inverter, and the solar charge controller as well. So we will do all this today. I have just measured the cable here as well to make sure it is long enough and the plan is actually to move the shelf a little bit over here so we can wheel the battery in this corner in this gap here and have the cables done there in this rail and then coming up all this way through the clans and directly connect to uh, the inverter. So that's the plan for today. Let's see how far we come. All right, so what I'm doing right now is connecting the 240 volt output here from the inverter to our little uh, switchboard enclosure here, which will carry an RCD a circuit breaker and a second circuit breaker for the light circuit. Um, well, here in Australia, they've got, they've got power and light circuits separated with um, yeah, different circuits and different breakers. So I will follow this rule here and we'll do the same here on the off-grid system as well. So this is just a small piece of ducting here more peace of mind than anything else but later on when everything is closed it looks nice there's no visible cables it's all ducted and all put away because this is the 240 volt side want to be safe and as per regulations All right, I think we have done the 240 volt side so far. We've got an RCD and 16 amp circuit breaker in here. Well, it's more like the main switch for the whole system because it turns off your neutral and your active at the same time. 16 amp is a bit high for a 3 kilowatt inverter, but um, this is the main... Well, the, the only other size you can get is a 10 amp and this is a little bit too low. Well, anyway, uh, we've got the input here on the top of this RCD, which works perfectly for me. But usually all breakers, they've got the input on the bottom side. So they're coming from the bottom and then go have the output on the other side on the top. So, well, in this case, it works for me because we are coming from the inverter from the top, connects here to the RCD as a main switch. And then we go from here with our neutral to our garage with our active to our garage and with the ground or earth to our garage. And then we've got a second circuit coming from here for our lighting going to the garage. And this is pretty much it. This will be everything we will have here in this little enclosure below the inverter. So, and the next step, unfortunately, I have to disconnect my solar inverter there on the workbench, the blue one. Uh, because this will be the next step to mount this one here in the cabinet and then cable the solar charge controller to the inverter and from there to the batteries. But first we need to um, find a good space for it. Uh, well, we are still charging with three amps there into the battery from, the, from solar. It's a cloudy and rainy day today, so I'm not expecting much sun coming into the battery anyway, so I'll just disconnect everything now. So step number one will be disconnect solar, isolate everything.
Okay, take off the solar panel leads and we can disconnect the solar charger here. We still need to disconnect all the cables here from the battery as well. I'll do this in a minute, but let's mount this one first. So probably this is a good spot here. Oh, you can barely see me. Uh, probably this is a good spot here. Has enough room outside. We've got a bit of distance to the uh, fuse holders up here. And then we just need to connect the positive and negative here to our inverter. And we are done. Can actually go a little bit further this way. Yeah, I think around here is a good position. It needs to be straight, right? It needs to be straight. So I'm now connecting the solar charge controller to the solar fuses here. We've got four connections here and we've got two... I can see it. We've got two inputs here. And down here at the solar charge controller side, I'm using a 10 millimeter cable terminal to get these two uh, four millimeter cables inside so in this case i've got only one terminal going into the terminals of the solar charge controller this gives much more stability for the cable than having two separate cables connecting into this clamp here Oh yes. So there you go. There's two 4mm cables into one 10mm terminal and this goes now into our and this goes now into our positive here side of the solar charge controller. And so we have now successfully <laughs> well I, I hope so successfully cabled our solar charge controller to the fuses they're all turned off still until we have connected the battery, of course. <sighs> still so much work. Unbelievable. So all the solar cabling is now done in four millimeter or four square millimeter cable. And um, the output of the solar charge controller here and to go to the inverter, to go to the battery, I will take this 10 millimeter cable for that because we could potentially have 35, 40 amps here on the controller and uh, four millimeter is far too small for that. I could take two of them, double them up, that would be all right. But I've got this 10 millimeter cable here anyway, so I just use that. The only downside is I have got only black, uh, I've got only red one. I've got only red cable. And also it is not flexible, it is a solid cable well, it has these, it has these seven cores inside, so it is semi-flexible, I would say. Not the best to work with, but it's the one of installation. Um, what I haven't done is yet, I have no fuse or no breaker in between the solar charge controller and the battery. Apart from the fuse in the battery itself, the 100 amp fuse, of course. Should I have a breaker in between the solar charge controller and the inverter where it connects to? I'm not sure. I leave some space there. I always can put a breaker or something in here. There will be space for that. But I'm not sure if I need it. I've found mixed reviews on the internet when you search for that. Some people do, some people don't. I don't know what the regulation for that is, if there needs to be one, or if there can be one, or if it's, if it's handy to have one, I don't know. I don't really see the point of having one in between, because I can always pull the fuses out there, and to turn off the solar charge controller, 
and then there's no output to the inverter to the battery anymore so having another step in between pff, yeah I don't know leave your comments down below as always thanks <laughs>
So they are too active, the two red ones. Why is this not focusing? Is it too dark? And um, two neutrals and one earth. So tomorrow we will cut this one off. The active ants go into this junction box here, just as a dead end. And all this cable here will be connected to our switchboard here. And uh, this is our feed from the inverter through the switchboard, RCD, circuit breakers, into the main garage system here. All the power points, all lights, everything here in the garage will be powered from this inverter then. And as the very, very last step, we need to connect our battery here to the positive and negative of the inverter, connect our charge controller, <laughs> and then we are done. I cannot believe we are that far. I would really like to continue, but it's it's already getting dark outside. I worked since this morning, 10 o'clock here in the garage. This is like this is like over eight hours now I spent here building up this system. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I haven't done anything else. That took me like eight hours to figure everything out and cable everything, mount everything, crimp. I'm really tired now. Well, if you have come that far, congratulations. <laughs> we are very close now to the off-grid garage. So one more day and I think we will be there. Yeah, I think in the next video, <coughs> if I make it until then. So in the next, in the very next video, we will cut off the garage from the grid power, connect everything, connect our battery and just hope for the best that everything works. Well, everything has been tested here on the test bench for the last two weeks now, and it worked just fine. The only new thing is all the cabling and the inverter here, there. So hopefully this is all working fine together and I haven't made any mistake. I will check all the cabling again before I turn everything on, but well, it should be fine. It should be fine. I'm super, super, super excited to to do all this and to run these lights here, these terrible light tubes here from solar power the next time they will turn on. Hopefully tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, whenever I find time to get this all done. Guys, as always, thank you so, so much for all your comments under my videos, for all your support here on the channel. I cannot describe how I feel how this channel has evolved in the last couple of weeks here. It is just amazing, thanks to you guys. And I guess you stay charged, stay healthy, and we shall see us again in the next video. When we do it, we will go off-grid with the garage. Thanks again, guys. See you then. Bye-bye.